Hey everybody, it's Andrew back again with another video. And today we have the Dell Optiplex 7000 micro computer. So this micro form factor is something a little bit different. Now Dell sent this to me late last year. I didn't get to it till now. So looking forward to this one. This is a pretty interesting form factor. You can actually fit it behind the monitor where you can totally have it out of the way. So it's better for those that have limited space. Hey everybody, it's Andrew and this is my review of the Dell Optiplex 7000 microcomputer coming up. Now, before we get to the unit itself, I just want to let everyone know in the interest of transparency and full disclosure, I'm not being paid by Dell. I'm not being sponsored by Dell. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Dell is not getting copy approval. That means they're seeing this video for the first time, just like you. Now, this unit is on loan from Dell, and once this review is done, I'll be sending it back. Pricing for the Optiplex 7000 micro form factor has a starting price of $1,009.00 over at Dell.com. For those interested, I'll leave a link in the description below for more information and where you can buy one. Now, it looks like Dell just upgraded this to the 13th gen processor. It looks like the form factor is pretty much the same. So with an upgrade internally to 13th gen, even more up to date. So for those interested, I'll leave a link to that one as well in the description below. And I think this is going to be an interesting computer. So without further ado, let's find out what we get inside the box. So we get the unit itself. This looks pretty interesting. The Dell Optiplex 7000 Micro Series Computer Year. It's got the V Pro. It's got a 12th gen processor, but uh, maybe it'll get upgraded this year. But I like the form factor. This Optiplex 7000 on here looks pretty interesting. We're going to look at it in depth. And of course, we get the power supply. Okay, and this one is 180 watts, and you can actually see it right here. So 180 watts, and he uses a barrel pin type of connection right there so pretty interesting and let's put that to the side and we also get the power cord you can see that right there okay and then we get some documentation here so the optiplex 7000 micro uh you can see it right there and you get some warranty and safety information right there it's a little blown out but that's okay uh let's put the box to the side and we're going to need this power supply plugged in in a moment but let's uh let's talk about the unit itself so you can see here so this is the bottom of the unit and then of course this will be the front but you can also place it obviously on on its uh Get ready to horizontal. On the front is your power button. You get an audio jack, a headset jack, USB A, and a USB Type C port to round out the ports on the front. Moving over to the back, you get your power port, three DVI out ports, three USB Type A ports, an HDMI port, and an Ethernet port to round out the ports on this unit. All in all, a pretty decent port selection. Now, what I really like about this microcomputer is that everything is pretty much upgradable. The SSD, the RAM, the Wi-Fi card, and that is looking good. There's also an extra M.2 slot for another SSD. So you got a lot of options here when it comes to user upgradability, and that is something we certainly love to see, especially here in 2023. Now, you can see the fan here, you can see the heat sink, and all that is here accessible to the user. So if you wanna open this up, it is an option to you and upgradability is definitely doable. Now, speaking of the RAM, you're talking about DDR5 RAM. Now there are two eight gigabyte sticks of RAM in my review unit, but you can go up to 64 gigabytes in total as far as RAM is concerned on this micro computer. And about the SSD, check out these reads and writes. Excellent here, although I'm not sure what the deal is when I tried to run the test, that first test, chose zero, although the speeds in real world usage has been excellent. So pretty interesting. If anybody knows why that didn't run the first test, 
let me know in the comment section below. But either way, very good reads and writes when it comes to the SSD. Now the Wi-Fi card is slotted in. It's a combo card with the Bluetooth. Both have been working very well in my testing. No issues on either front. So I plugged everything in. We have the Dell mouse, the Premier mouse with the Premier keyboard. Dell sent that over as well. So it's gonna help me test everything out. As far as a monitor, I'm connected to input number six on my camera switcher. So we'll be able to see it together. Hopefully that will work. Let's hit the power button right here. So we got the mouse. So I need to set it to the number one, I believe. So let me go to, there we go. Mouse is connected and let's connect that. It also has Bluetooth. So it already detected that. Okay, so this is working. And let me see if the keyboard is working. Yep, that's working. So everything is working so far. So let's take a look at some of the settings as I'll put myself down there. So let's go to the system settings. And this is exactly what the specs are on this unit. I wanna thank Dell, by the way, for sending this over. Of course, as you know, I'm not being paid by Dell. I'm not being sponsored by Dell. And while I'm running some benchmarks here, you can definitely see it from the back. I'm connected via HDMI over there. There's the power connection. Uh, you can see really slim form factor here. Uh, I really like it. And then in the front, you can see again, the grilling here. And I really like how you can mount this behind the monitor out of the way, freeing up your desktop as far as space is concerned. So not only is this very portable, it's also a great form factor for space saving. And for those wondering, this is what the keyboard looks like. It's a really nice feeling keyboard as far as tactility, as far as key travel. Uh, it's, it's a plastic, but it feels very, very well made, very premium. And this is the mouse. So looking pretty good as, as far as moving it around. And as far as the precision on it, it's very good in terms of the pointing. And as a pointing device, I think it's actually pretty good. Okay, here we're running our first benchmark. It's a Cinebench R15 and we're running the OpenGL, which will test the integrated graphic solution that they've employed here so far. I don't hear much of the fan noise, if at all. I mean, it's a low whisper, but it's nothing to be concerned about at all. It's actually pretty quiet. And there you can see very similar to what we would get with integrated Iris XE graphics. All right, so let's run the CPU test. We'll do, do this in real time here, ladies and gentlemen. This is not a, a long test, and I'll put it in this video, of course. And this will test the CPU. Now, the Core i7-12700 has a total of 12 cores. We're looking at eight performance cores and four efficiency cores. So it's the, uh, it's the opposite of what we see with the P-Series. Of course, this is a quote-unquote desktop-style processor here. Again, 12 cores, eight performance, four efficient, and a total of 20 threads. So it's got a maximum turbo frequency of 4.9 gigahertz and a maximum turbo boost of 4.9 and maximum core max frequency 4.8. So it's looking pretty good. Processor base power is 65 watts with a maximum turbo power of 180 watts. So looking pretty good so far. And these are the numbers, 2,665 on that Cinebench score for, as far as the CPU is concerned. And here we are running the Geekbench 6 test. So hopefully we'll get a good score as far as single core and multi-core performance. So this is looking very encouraging. The Dell Optiplex 7000 scored a 2,452 on the single core score and a very good 13,086 on the multi-core score. So this is gonna be good for certain types of tasks, but definitely the performance is very encouraging so far. And I wouldn't get your hopes up too high as far as doing any kind of video editing, intensive video editing, maybe some light video editing in Premiere Pro or DaVinci Resolve. At 7,955, this is not even Iris XE graphics, so you're doing below that with UHD graphics. So something to bear in mind here as far as graphics. It definitely has some excellent single and multi-core performance as shown by the numbers. But when it comes to graphics, don't expect to do gaming on this and don't expect to do high-end video editing editing, Photoshop that has a lot of layers and the so forth. So just keep that in mind. 
temper your expectations when it comes to the graphics. But of course, the audience that this is geared towards is really not going to care too much about that. They're looking to do spreadsheets. They're looking to crunch numbers. They're looking to do documents and so forth, word processing. This is definitely going to fit the bill. Okay, so now we're running the Cinebench R20. This will test the CPU. We'll be right back with the result. And we're back, and this is a very good result, 6,308. That's a very good result when it comes to the Cinebench R20, which tests the CPU, which is very strong here. And while this is running, I'm noticing some of the fan noise really ramping up during that test for the first time. I'm really hearing it. Not too loud, though. I think it's below 45 decibels, but definitely noticeable. So I'll keep my eye out on that. And as far as the temperatures, nothing very hot, nothing very warm, although it is heating up a little bit on the bottom. But so far, so good in the terms of the surface temperatures. We'll keep monitoring it. Okay, so now I'm running the Cinebench R23. And of course, this is going to test the multi-core first. And I'm hearing the fans kicking in, so the fan noise is ramping up. Let's actually test out just how loud it is. Let me get my Apple Watch ready here to test the decibel levels of it. It's actually pretty loud, 59 decibels. So 59, 60 decibels, definitely noticeable. And when I ran it under heavy load, you'll notice that there are a few hot spots here and there, especially where the power supply is plugged in. You'll see it can get pretty hot, but otherwise relatively cool everywhere else. Just notice that really, really getting hot there. So something to be aware of. And check out this Cinebench R23 test. Did really well in the multi-score, scoring 14,000. 363, that's excellent. And the CPU, as far as a single core score is concerned, did 1,894. This is a really good performing microcomputer, folks. Really, really good here, I'm very impressed. All right, we're running the Time Spy score, and I'm not expecting really good graphics performance with this integrated solution, these UHD graphics. It's not even Iris XE, as I mentioned. So I'm not expecting this to do any kind of serious gaming, maybe some light gaming on older titles. You might have a chance. But looking at these frame rates in the Time Spy test that I'm running right now from the 3D Mark test this is not looking like it's really meant to do any kind of graphics horsepower such as 4k video editing or stuff like that and certainly you're not going to play AAA titles on their highest settings it's just not in the cards for this micro computer but we'll get the results and we'll see how that's going to all fare out i'm going to also do the fire strike score as well so we'll see how this all plays out and just to give you an example look at this 3.5 or so frames per second on this part of the time spy test on the 3d mark graphics test so really again you're not going to be playing triple a titles on the highest settings from for the most part you're really not going to be gaming on this just keep that in mind and as i suspected not a very good score 889 we see on ultra books in the 1500 range or so and this didn't even break a thousand although it's saying good it's good for the intel uhd graphics 770 but not good when you compare it to even iris xe graphics or the integrated radeon 680m we looked at in the hp dragonfly pro so not very good in terms of that and then if you can look here you're not going to be able to do much in terms of the uh, graphics in terms of playing games 20 frames per second in battlefield even if we put it at 1080p it's less than 30 frames per second if you look at gta 5 you're looking at uh yeah, so gta 5 you're looking at 140 so you, you can definitely play gta 5 on 1080p but if you go to 1440 look at that it goes down to 20 frames or less than 20 frames per second and something like red dead redemption at 1440p so you can't do it doesn't have any data and then less than 20 frames per second when you're running it in 1080p ultra so again these will just let you know 
that you're not going to be doing any serious gaming on this. That's basically what this tells us. And here's the Fire Strike result, 2,589. Again, not gonna blow you away in terms of this graphical performance, but I guess it's okay. Uh, for certain things you can definitely do on this. Light gaming may be one of them if you lower the settings. And when I ran the Time Spy stress test to see if this will power throttle under heavy load, the good news is it got a 99.5% passing score, meaning it maintained good clock speeds throughout, even under heavy load. So as far as the thermals are concerned, looking good. Okay, people, let's bring it all home. What do I think about the Dell Optiplex 7000 micro form factor computer here for 2023? I like the fact that it is that small form factor allowing you to mount it behind a monitor out of the way. Love that. I love its portability. It's lightweight. It doesn't take up a lot of space in your bag if you want to take it with you. So that's pretty good. It's got a really good port selection, great upgradability as far as the RAM, the SSD, the Wi-Fi card, and the like. So very good internally as far as upgradability runs relatively quiet it has got a really good performance both single core and multi-core performance really good where the weaknesses are of course are the graphics due to the fact that it employs uhd graphics 770 it's not even iris xe there's no discrete graphics option either so that is a bit of a negative so if you're going to plan to do 4k video editing if you plan to do any kind of gaming although it's not really geared towards gamers really it's not meant to do that you're meant to crunch numbers office work and the like with the extreme portability being able to take it with you in your bag to bring it to your home office back to your work office that is great versatility but my overall takeaway is the Dell Optiplex 7000 micro form factor really brings something interesting and very portable that packs a punch to the table. And I think Dell did a good job here, and I'm really happy that they upgraded to 13th gen processors here for 2023. So please hit the like button, please subscribe, please share this video. Don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section below. Let me know how I'm doing. Let me know if there's a device or something out there you think I should review. I'll do my best to try to make that happen. Don't forget to check me out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and of course, my website, amdtechreviews.com. So until next time, this is Andrew, and I'll see you in the next video.